Today my guest is Jay Tower. Jay, how are you? Good, David. Nice to see you again. Great to see you. Thanks for driving all the way here from Grand Rapids, Michigan to my uh, Downers Grove, Illinois. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> Anything for Downers Grove. Uh, it's a magical place. <laughs> uh, well, I know you're driving back tonight. Mm -hmm. How far is it to Grand Rapids? Uh, I think it'll take me about three hours. Oh, man. Yep. And um, you spoke tonight on what? So tonight I talked about .NET Standard. Hmm. Um, my head starts to swim a little bit when mm. people say .NET Core and .NET Standard, and uh, that's not the, that's one of the many flavors and versions of .NET. Yeah. Um, does that does that ever get to you like it gets to me? Yeah, for sure. And I talk to people about .NET things all the time, and uh, have definitely found, especially I think because .NET Standard came out at the exact same time as .NET Core that people sort of conflate those two things. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they are related, but they're not the exact same thing. And uh, I think people sometimes think .NET Standard is another way of saying .NET Framework. Is that what we had before? Yeah, so .NET Framework is the .NET that we all know and love that's been on Windows for 15 years. We're currently on version 4.8 point something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's .NET Framework. Okay. And then, of course, everybody knows .NET Core is the cool, hot, new .NET that everybody loves. I don't know if everybody knows that, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's cross-platform. It's cross-platform. It's, uh, it's totally rewritten from scratch, mm -hmm. so it's kind of the more modern version of .NET. Um, people may have heard of Mono, which is what Xamarin uses to run .NET code on iOS and Android, okay. uh, as well as other places like on Mac. Mm -hmm. And then we've got this thing called .NET Standard, which you would not be alone if you were, you know, jump to the conclusion that this is yet another flavor of, of .NET uh, for some other platform. But in fact, it's actually a standard, as the name suggests, or a specification hmm. that all of these other .NETs can implement. Okay, so standard is not a framework. Right. .NET framework is still a thing, right. it's, it's still around. Exactly, yep. There's it's no real implementation in standard at all. It's just... It just describes what the implementation will or should look like. Yeah, you've got it. Okay. Um, all right. So, what? Uh, why do? Why is it important to understand the differences between these flavors of .NET? Yeah. So, you know, today a lot of people are starting to write code, uh, especially class libraries, that they want to be able to use on some of these different flavors of .NET. Mm -hmm. So, you might write some utility classes that you want to be able to use, or maybe business logic classes that you want to be able to use on your Xamarin iOS app, and on your, you know. .NET framework application, maybe WinForms or something like that, uh, but you also want to use it in your, you know, hot new .NET, ASP.NET Core application. Um, and so to reuse that code in all those places, you need to really compile that code in a way that it's accessible to all of those different flavors of .NET, yeah. and that's really what .NET standard allows you to do. Okay. Um, I've been bitten by this before. So, in fact, <laughs> just yesterday, I was, um, I was, I wrote some, uh, I created a new project. Mm -hmm. I created two new projects. And when I referenced one from the other, I got a, an error. It, right. it said, this, is, this version of the .NET framework is not compatible with that version of the .NET framework. Right. Yeah. What, it's what was I doing wrong and how would I know? <laughs> I, how could I have known ahead of time yeah. to fix that? Yeah, so what I would really recommend is there's a, there's a great site on a uh, great page on GitHub for mm -hmm. the .NET Standard project, which is where Microsoft actually does all of their work in the open for .NET Standard. Uh, but if you actually just go to github.com slash .NET slash standard, okay. so that's D-O-T-N-E-T slash -E standard, uh, or if you just Google uh, .NET Standard versions, okay. uh, you'll get right to the article or the um, markdown file that I'm talking about. And that's this right here. Yeah, and that's okay. this right so here I'm that, that we're looking at. put this on the at. screen so okay. hopefully our viewers can see yeah. see what we're looking at right now. And there's a table that says mm -hmm. uh, across the the y-axis or the left, it has .NET Core, .NET Framework, Mono, etc. Mm -hmm. And across the top are version numbers, right? Exactly. You've got All it. All right. So what's the significance of this table? How do I read this table? Yeah. So if you look down the left side, like you were saying, that left column, that is all of the different platforms of .NET that exist. Let's say all the modern, uh, highly used ones, because there are some other kind of minor ones that aren't included here. Um, but .NET Core, we talked about .NET Framework, um, Mono on iOS, Xamarin, and Mac, or I'm sorry, iOS, Android, and Mac. 
as well as like Unity and UWP. So that's kind of all of our different flavors of .NET. And then along the top, you've got the different versions of the .NET standard that each of those platforms can implement in its different versions. Mm -hmm. okay. So if we just take, for example, right here, uh, 1.6 version of the .NET okay. standard, and then follow that down, we can see that .NET Core 1.0 implements .NET standard 1.6. Okay. So does .NET Framework 4.6.1, Mono 4.6, et cetera, right? Okay. So if, I will, if you told me, hey, Jay, I'm trying to write this class library, I want it to work on .NET Core 1.0 mm -hmm. and .NET Framework 4.5 and above, uh, I would tell you, well, David, looking at this chart, I can tell you need to target .NET Standard 1.0 in okay. your class library. When you say target, that's something that I set in a configuration somewhere, right? Yep, exactly. So if you're a Visual Studio user, you would actually go into the Project Properties pane for that project for that class library. Okay. Uh, when you create a new project, you'll want to tell it also that you're creating a class library of the type .NET Standard, hmm. um, not a .NET Framework class library, because that would only be able to target .NET Framework. .NET standard means that this class library could be used with any of these different .NET platforms. Oh, okay. So I should change the target, uh, not only the version number, but the, you, you've even calling it a flavor the yeah. from, from mm -hmm. .NET framework or .NET core to .NET standard. Yep, exactly. So should I be using all of my, should I create all of my Visual Studio projects as .NET standard? Yeah, so like if you're creating an ASP.NET application or ASP.NET core or WinForms or something like that, those are all... Uh, very specific. Those need to actually target a real, actual framework. So those you have to actually tell it to target .NET Core or .NET Framework or something like that, right? To actually run in a runtime. But when you're creating a class library, that's going to be hosted by an application. Oh, okay. That's when you can actually target .NET standard. The, so that's the the class libraries which run in process. Those are the ones that I should exactly. target. Exactly. Yep. Uh, class uh, libraries framework. that are going to be referenced by some other application project. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that runs out of process, like an executable or a uh, the web application. Yep. Those will all those target some actual .NET framework or .NET Core. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. This sounds a little bit like um, the portable class libraries that um, for sure. I also used to struggle with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me too. Those were a lot harder for sure. And I think that the fact that you and I struggled with it, I think a lot of people also struggled with it, is yeah. the part of the reason. Hard, part of the reason they're hard is because this is a hard problem. Right. When, we o when I used to just write things for Windows, mm -hmm. and I knew which version of Windows, right. I didn't have to think about this sort of thing. Exactly. It was only one thing to think about, and there was no complexity to that, no backwards compatibility concerns or anything. Right. Yep. Yeah, so uh, PCLs really tried to solve the same problem. They kind of approached it in a different way. Okay. Uh, they approached it with, hey, let's take all of the platforms you're trying to target and let's look at the overlap in the APIs between mm -hmm. those and that's what we'll make available to you if you're trying to target these three platforms then only the things that are the exact same, uh, the intersection of those APIs, are what's available to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that gets real complicated when you start thinking about all the different platforms of .NET, yeah. all the different versions of those platforms. It's a lot of permutations. I think there was over, well over 300 different permutations oh, I, at I the time that, that. I remember the checkboxes that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Once you, I remember also that if you checked Xbox, then every, like <laughs> two thirds of the features <laughs> disappeared. Yep, exactly. Xbox was a very limiting one <laughs> for sure. And so .NET Standard tries to approach that in a totally different way. It's a curated list of things that there's actual team of people who's saying, hey, wouldn't it be great? if this API or that API was available to people who were trying to program in .NET on this platform or that platform. And once they target that as something they would like to have mm -hmm. on different platforms, they'll make it part of the specification. And then when that each platform implements that specification, it sort of moves up to that version of .NET standard. Okay, and so that's what this chart is actually showing, is when, yep. uh, when a given platform has implemented a specification described You've got in a it. version of the .NET framework. Exactly. Yep. All right. Um, and that that does sound simpler. I think uh, I think I'd have to put it into practice before I try it. Yeah. If um, you kind of leave this up and then start working with it and then keep referring back to this to understand why it's happening, I think that's kind of the best way to figure it out. But uh, have this chart easily accessible. <laughs> okay. We'll also put a link to it in the show yeah, notes as that'd well. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, 
And uh, where, where else uh, did you, I mean, this is, uh, I'm looking at this GitHub page here, and there's more than just a chart. There's a bunch of text on here. Is this yep. where you went to learn about this, or are there other sources that you can recommend? Yeah, this and uh, docs.microsoft.com is a really good place to learn about it. Uh, I should also mention right at the top of this page currently, there is a link for uh, interactive table, which is kind of a cool thing that one of the uh, team members made where okay. you can actually set the version of .NET standard that you're going to target. And then it'll actually kind of highlight different parts of the chart for you and show you which versions of the different frameworks support that. Uh, okay, so uh, this is looks like if I target 1.3, I'm not sharing this part of the screen here, but yeah. uh, I see that if I target uh, framework or .NET standard 1.3, that I get uh, .NET Core, several versions of .NET Core, right? Is that what uh, I mean? It's basically saying .NET Core 1 supports that. Oh. Why does it cover more than one column then? Uh, basically because from that version 1.3 all the way over to 1.6 is all for, uh, .NET Core 1.0. Oh, okay. It's, so it may be more confusing for some people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We'll put a link to it and if, uh, the smart people will figure out. The rest of us will just struggle along. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, all right. Now you're and you're, you're blogging about this stuff, aren't you? I am. Yeah. So if you go to my company's uh, blog that I uh, the company I own is called trailheadtechnology.com mm -hmm. slash blog, you'll see stuff about this there. All right. And you're speaking as well. Where are you speaking next? Uh, next, I'm speaking at I think it's at the Chicago Code Camp. Uh, okay. That's uh, this will probably come up before then. That's May May 11th. Something. I think May 11th. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, and then you're also hosting a Code Camp as well. Yeah. That's right. Beer City Code is our conference in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, microbrewery capital of the country as well as the technology capital of, well, West Michigan, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to know there are a lot of technology fans yeah. and beer fans watching this show. For sure. <laughs> well, then they should come join us. It's the perfect intersection of those two things. BeerCityCode.com. Yes. It's all about the Venn diagrams. Of yes, beer exactly. And code <laughs> and cities, I guess. <laughs> uh, all right, Jay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Drive safe tonight. All right, thanks. <laughs> Bye. The only thing I love more than technology is my friends. <laughs>